Uh, the house I was born in was 927 Jackson Street. Okay. Welcome to South Philadelphia. As you can see from this video, we will start showing this section of 10th and Jackson Street. A block away will be the former resident of the former underboss of the Philadelphia crime family, Salvatore Chucky Merlino, and his son, Joseph Skinny Joy Merlino, specifically on 927 Jackson Street. This section of the Philadelphia has a lot of history. A few blocks down, as you can see from the skyline, you can see the church. This church, called Epiphany, Our Lord Parish, is on 1121 Jackson Street. This church was the place where Angelo Bruno, the late godfather of Philadelphia, where his funeral was held. Angelo Bruno will be the reigning godfather from 1958 until his untimely demise in 1980. His funeral will consist of a thousand mourners attending his funeral. Also, if you watch the Skinny podcast with Joey Molino and his co-host Little Snuff, Joey Molino even acknowledged that this church was also where he was an altar boy, as you can see in this clip. Yeah, I was an altar boy. I didn't know that. Tiffany of our Lord. Who were you? Everybody? Me, I think me, Vinny, Marty, we're all altar boys. Wait, and where was this at? Was Tiffany this of our Tiffany, Lord. okay. We got caught. They had the marital certificates. You know, you get married, you give a certificate. We used yeah. to steal them. We used to steal them and sell it to, to this guy for $5 each. I don't know what the fuck he was doing with them. <laughs> what was he kids. doing with them? I don't them? know. He said, you got married all we, we looked at it back. Yeah, you know. We, yeah. Then we got caught. We all got thrown out. They're fucking being old. That was the end of our altar boy days. We last there, but my grandmother was sick. She yeah. My grandmother wanted me to be a priest. Really? Because I got a, I got two cousins that are priests. I know. Father Kelly and I got another yeah. cousin in California. Father Kelly, St. Monica's, think, yeah, my buddy. Father Kelly, what they did to him. <laughs> yeah, what they did there. Another guy they buried in the media, yeah, but. Yeah, the media buried him. Yeah. And he came to court for me. Yeah. They called him my father. Yeah, that's Sick. amazing, ain't it? Fuck so your boss. altar boy career was cut it, it, short. Cut short for stealing marital certificates. Yeah, and that was the end of that. Mm -hmm. Now we will show you from 10th and Jackson Street to where the residence of the Molino family was. As you can see, this is a very beautiful row home section, and this is what the residents look like as of today. To give you a little bit more background around this house, don't forget, Salvatore Chucky Molino also had a brother. While he was serving as the underboss, his younger brother, Lawrence Yogi Molino, quite possibly lived here as well. They both came from Atlantic City. They both came from Atlantic City, New Jersey, and they moved into the Philadelphia region. They both share the same parents and the similar values until Lawrence Yogi Merlino became an informant many years down the road. To this day, his nephew, Skinny Joy Merlino, resents him to this day even beyond the grave. Pretty soon, we're about to show you some clips of what Joy Merlino describes that he lived in this residence and the history of how it saved his life. During the 1990s, Ralph Natali was the mob boss at that time. However, he will eventually become the first mob boss that will become an informant and turn against his own entourage, including Merlino. Natali have made some claims against Merlino, and you'll hear from Merlino's perspective of how he countered that argument once it came to this property, 927 Jackson Street, as you can see from here. It's my grandma's house. And then we, we lived there. She lived with us. My grandfather died. Uh, my grandfather died when my father was like 13. Yeah, that's where you grew up on, Nice yeah, Jackson. Yeah, okay. but my, my father, they grew up there. Okay. They lived there, uh, I don't know how, uh, the whole life. Yeah. So my grandfather and Joe DiMaggio, the baseball player, were... Joey D? Yeah. We're, wow. We're great friends. I wow. got pictures. I'm going to show you the pictures. So anyway, every... He used to come to the house to eat. Joe, this is what he was playing. Yeah, this is when he was on the Yankees. Yeah, the Yankees. I mean, and he was the biggest then. Yeah, Yogi Berra, like Billy Martin. They used wow. to come to the house and eat. They used to block the street off Jackson Street with so many people. Because they knew they were coming. Yeah. Like, like we're, you know, South Philly. Of course. Tell one person the whole fucking city does. So anyway, they used to take him up the alley, whatever, you know. So they would come here and eat. So Ralph, remember, they used to tell me, I remember, you know, Joe DiMaggio used to go to your grandfather's house. Because he's old. He's old, Ralph. Yeah. I mean, he, he fucking might be. 80-something now. Yeah. Anyway, they went to the house. 
So now he testifies in the case. You remember the house on Jackson Street? He testifies in the case. The government never checked nothing. Like they, they just listen to whatever he told them was gospel. Like they never okay. checked nothing. Yeah. So he tells them it was in October. It was after the Billy Vesey murder. Okay. He makes up the story that he met. He met me, uh, Marty, Johnny, uh, like three, four guys, and uh, on Jackson Street. Okay. At my grand, at my at my grandmother's house. Yeah. He said he made this whole big story up here. He had a meeting. He hugged me. He kissed me. It was a three-bedroom house. Every house is South Philly same. Three bedrooms, one bathroom, the kitchen, and a yeah. parlor. That was he was it. just making up anything. Yeah, but he yeah. knew what the house looked like. You know, a three-bedroom house. So anyway, I'm sitting there. I'm saying, now this is in fucking 90, 1995. Okay. That yeah, this meeting happened. Ago. This happened. Yeah. It was like October 95. So I'm sitting there. I'm saying, this motherfucking house, my grandmother's house. I said, this can't be. So I tell my lawyer, I tell Eddie. I said, Ed, he's fucking lying. Yeah. And he said, what do you mean? I said, my grandmother didn't own the house. She sold the house three and a half years before that. Wow. To a Chinese guy, Chinese family. Yeah. He's like, you kidding me? No. We get the investigator. We go to City Hall. We pull a deed. We got the fucking deed. Of the house, yeah. We called a Chinese guy as a witness. We had to get an interpreter. He didn't speak English. And he came. He came, yeah. We subpoenaed wow. him. Yeah. He came with an interpreter. Eddie asked him, uh... You live 927, Jack. Yeah, when did you buy it? Three and a half years ago. Here's the deed. Is this you? Yeah, it's me. Jesus. Points. God. Tells the guy, you know Joey Merlino? Never seen him in my life. You know any of these? There was seven of us at the table. Yeah. Look, point every defendant, me, Marty, Georgie, you know, everybody pointed. I never seen him. Was he ever in your house? Never. Wow. Could he have came in? You know, maybe you weren't there. Impossible. They were never in my house. Jesus. Ever. Look how the fuck he lied. That's how he lied like that. Up. And he even said he, he sold the pictures. fucking house. Yeah, yeah. 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 He described yeah. the whole yeah, house. Yeah, he said on the man order was yeah. pictures. Yeah. I read it. Yeah. Wow. Sold the whole... The house was sold three and a half years before that. Thank God. And I mean, you know, I remember up. we went and got the deed. Yeah. And he got caught dead fucking lying. Guy's a habitual liar. Yeah. I mean, it's... And he made, he made up that it was whole all entire thing. to get out of jail. He was facing... Listen, you got to understand. He got locked up. Okay. He didn't get locked up with us. He got locked up for selling meth. There's a tape. We're going to play that, too. He tells yeah. Ron Previty, another fucking another fat pig beauty. He tells him on the tape, don't, he called us the kids, don't tell the kids that I'm selling meth. Wow. But we yeah. didn't sell drugs. Yeah. Fuck, I didn't sell. We, none of us ever sold. We never even got charged. I got charged with drugs. It was a setup. I yeah. But I'm just saying, we never we never sold drugs. He didn't want He didn't want us to know. He didn't, So he basically made up, thank God for that guy. That you subpoenaed to come there, it saved your life, really. Yeah. Because he he made up all the story and they're, he they're was believing dead. everything he said. He was listen, we had the deed to the house. Yeah. Sold the house three and a half years before the fucking whatever, wow. ninety-five, he sold we sold it in ninety-two, whatever. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love you.